To the bonus episode of the Weekly Juice Podcast. My name is Ryan Bevilacqua, aka Ryan Quarantine Bevilacqua. Joined alongside here with my co-host Corey Jacobson. Corey, what's new, man? For those of you who can't see, Ryan has a cheetah print mask on, and he's getting it in Tootsie Slide style right now. So, um, yeah, that's why his voice is muffled. But it's pretty cool. I need a mask. Ryan. I don't have one. I feel like I'm gonna get tackled by the national guard when i go outside for not having one but i will get one i guess do you have any do you want to do you have any extra or did you make those like how do you even i actually got two of them yeah i got we got matching ones (laughs) and you went on a really important beer and wine run today so yeah that you know what it was very it was actually strange um was there no one out so we went to a grocery store like giant has um kind of like a beer and wine section and every single person in the um, grocery store is wearing a mask it literally feels like a zombie apocalypse Dude. like something super weird and wrong is going on it feels like um not a ton of people. <laughs> that's because something super weird and wrong is happening it's <laughs> it just doesn't feel like real life it genuinely feels like a movie so um you know so- i was in whole foods with jake uh, a couple days ago and we were the only ones not wearing masks and i thought people were gonna assassinate us like the looks we were getting for not wearing masks and i like I mean, I guess if I'm not wearing one, but everyone else is, like, I'm kind of good, right? Uh, uh, I uh, you definitely need to get a mask, dude. That doesn't, I'm, pretty that's sure not they, I'm pretty sure it's mandatory now. It like, is. no one was not wearing one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Don't want to be that guy. I've seen people, just if you get too close to people, they get uncomfortable and they say yeah. stuff. I've just seen weird things. By the way, that's going to last four years in terms of people getting uncomfortable with people getting close. Like, it's, that's, that's just the beginning of this. So I genuinely think people will wear masks to the grocery store or wear masks out for a long time after this. Just yeah. to, they're not going to feel safe. Yeah. Um, so welcome to 2020. We've had a good start to the year. Uh, for yeah. sure. <laughs> it's, been, uh, it's been interesting. Um, I don't know. So I, I think a lot of things have changed. You know, we talked about this, you and I a, couple, a little bit here, but you never, you may never have a, a hiatus like this again, you know, like, in between work for me basically what i mean is like i i've always begged or thought like it would be awesome that a couple days to work from home just so i could do some things for myself or plan out my future whether it be financially or professionally whatever it is um so i think this time is an awesome time for people to to really sit back and think about what they want to do with their lives or focus in on one thing that they want to do and, and really dive all the way in on it you and I kind of talked a little bit about like, that's how the inception of this, this podcast even came about. Right. Exactly. We're like, we were trying to find this like, I don't know, sort of passion project for us while we were still working, but definitely like at limited hours. And I was trying to find things that if I could still do things that I'm passionate about, luckily I did it, did end up finishing our my, coaching my high school basketball season So I wasn't going to be coaching right now anyway. So that was like option one. Okay. I'm not going to coach option two. I love, you know, the financial independence movement and I love kind of sharing my story about how I'm inching my way there. So I was like, I know you're the same, you feel the same way about investing and everything. So we were like, why don't we just put this out there to people? And it seems like we're getting a good reception. So it's a little daunting though. I will say like a lot of people said, I've had a couple of people who say, you start a podcast and you know, I think there's like a ton that goes into it. There is obviously a lot of like prep work and things like that, but the fear of judgment and thing, that's the real, the real thing is like, what are, how are people going to react to it? Like, are they going to care? But like, honestly, who cares? Like, to be honest, I don't mind it at all, man, because like I I'm confident in the message and like, I don't, I think people are not going to like it. I, that's, that's expected. I, 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 if everyone liked it, I think we'd be doing something wrong almost, you know, it's like people are not going to like it, but we're not here to tell anyone what to do. It's just that we feel like, Oh, we have a cool story to share. We're, we're pretty, um, we're pretty normal guys. Like I, I just want to, hopefully we can get people to, to join in on the more people to join in the movement. So the judgment thing is like, you know, people are going to judge. My you. point there basically we just meant like people should just start whatever they want to do, even if they have slight interest in it and not care what people think because oh, the fear, like my initial inkling of like, okay, is like, what are people going to say? Like, 
do how much should I say? How little should I say? Like, am I going to get myself into trouble here? Giving my opinion. Like, honestly, genuinely don't care. Like, once you get over that fear, it's yeah. cool. It's awesome. And then you're like, I can just do anything else I want to do. Yeah. Whatever. That's so, so true. You know, it's like, it's the same thing with, yeah, really anything that you want to do. It's like, you're going to find this community of other people that are, that want to do that. So mm-hmm. it'll end up getting you out of the community that judges you for it. Right. That's what's cool. So I think you're right. It's, it's like during this quarantine, you sit back and say, okay, am I happy every day waking up? You know, what do I want to do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. Totally agree. So, you know, I, I came across a couple articles I was reading and it just talks about, how the world is completely lopsided right now and things that are, you know, weren't prominent are completely prominent now in, in different markets. Some are in an extreme growth market and some are, are falling fast. So what was interesting to me is like, you think about going out to the movies, think about going to the gym, going bought like travel, getting on an airplane. There's just so many industries that are taking a huge hit right now because you can't do things because people are scared of germs and, this thing spreads. We don't know how, how, what do they say? The, um, basically if you have it and you don't know you have it, what is that called again? Um, uh, asymptomatic. Asymptomatic. Yeah. So people are just scared. They don't want to get their parents sick. It's just, it's so crazy. So I, I thought it was interesting to see the markets that are on a rise. So, um, a lot of different things from video streaming to online groceries, food delivery, E-commerce, think about people buying things online. That's literally all they're doing. They get, or they're get, buying them online, getting them delivered to their house. Mm-hmm. Um, home improvement and gaming, I think that's a huge one. I, I've been buying a ton of stuff from my house and redoing different rooms. And yeah. um, I was like, I thought I was the only one doing that, but it, clearly I'm not. There's a ton of people that are doing that. Yeah. I don't know. I saw this, the crazy chart and like, that's one of the, the biggest growth marks right now. So. That's the whole reason why we wanted to do this bonus episode. I don't know if we said it in the beginning, the reason why we just thought that we want to put a positive spin on what you can be doing right now. Uh, we figured it was a good time to connect with people that uh, maybe are looking for what, you know, what are the things they can be doing while this is like an unidentified amount of time of being quarantined. We don't really know how long this is going to last. So you're going to have some time to really dive deep into your thoughts and find, figure out what's important to you, you know, uh, while you're cooped up in your house. And by the way, shout out to all the essential workers out there too, because the people that are doing the, you know, on the front lines of in hospitals and in the food and beverage industry that are, you know, stocking shelves and making sure that people can get food and toilet paper. And like, th- those are the real heroes, man. Like that's, that goes without saying in my opinion, but anyway, I just want to give that a little shout out. I think, um, I think it's absolutely insane that they're, you know, they're going out every day. It's, it's a regular job, but for a lot of people, it's, it's their passion and they, they don't feel like, Hey, this is a job that they, they want to go out and do it. It's not all, but like, it's, it's interesting um, to think about it that way. But for question for you, you know, what advice would you give someone or, you know, what have you been doing during this quarantine to, uh, to get better. And, you know, like, how are you resetting your thoughts and moving into uh, the next phase? Well, I'm taking a lot of time to, to learn about the next phases of each of the projects that I have going on in my life. So one of the things that I mentioned to people is that I coach basketball. So I'm taking a lot of time to like literally like learn new plays, learn new sets, learn new philosophies with that. Um, because I can't put it into action yet, but you know, I want to stay ready. So I don't have to get ready. Right. I don't Mm -hmm. know where that quote came from, but that's like, I've heard that before. So there, um, also I'm doing a lot of like real estate investing research on how this coronavirus quarantine is going to affect the markets and where I can put my, my next purchase. Those, I mean, that's another thing that I'm doing. Um, I just feel like working from home, it's a really good time to reset. And it's a really good time to, to make sure that you understand what you want to do when you come out of this. So how about you? Is there anything specific that you're doing right now that you think people would relate to? Um, Specifically just planning ahead, right? We talk about, I'm doing a couple different uh, passion projects, if you will. Um, Obviously the first one here is like the podcast, right? We're just, we're planning out each episode, what to talk about, 
with what we think is prominent, how it's going to help each other, like ourselves grow, but also others. Mm -hmm. uh, also planning out the real estate portfolio, right? Like yeah. similar to you, just planning, seeing how this is going to change the course of the world and how it's going to affect the markets. So what investment specifically, like what type of property I want to dive into um, and then timing, right? You know what I mean? I don't want to lose all the cash right now when things could dip in price. So mm -hmm. it's kind of just like keeping the head above water for now, um, saving, things like that. Um, goal setting is huge. I think we dove into that in, in one of the other episodes, but um, just planning out long, long-term goals and then breaking them down slowly. So that way over time, um, I have essentially a roadmap to help me get there. Yeah. So that's really what I'm doing now. Um, studying up a lot, just trying to see the way of the world, how it's going to shift when we get back. And, and obviously then like with work, planning ahead for that. So that way, when I get back thrown in the fire, I'm, I'm ahead of the game and not, uh, not falling falling behind essentially. Yeah. One thing I will say it, in relation to working from home and like that whole time to reset is that there's a, there's been some articles that have come out that said that the, the fire movement is dead and you know, it's, it's going downhill and it doesn't exist. And I, it doesn't make any sense to me. It yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And the whole, the thing is, is that the fire movement was born out of the 2008 financial crisis because people realized that their jobs weren't secure. So my suggestion to, you know, to those people that are writing these articles is like, let's really think about this is are people more secure right now living paycheck to paycheck when the economy comes to a, a, a complete halt or are they more uh, financially secure if they have that year of nesting? Like it doesn't, it's, it's kind of ludicrous to even think about it like that. So, so you're saying people are saying the financial independence retire early movement is dead. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're saying that because um, actually I don't even know why. <laughs> But I did read an article saying that, 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 that movement's not, it's not sustainable. So I don't know where that comes from. To be honest. Uh, well, I just think at this point, everybody is at least, at least in my network that I've talked to, they are focused more on keeping their money that they have and keeping money that they have coming in for themselves. And then obviously, you know, you pay your bills, but not, no, I don't feel like people are spending on, um, obviously not spending on trips right now. They're not spending yeah. on clothes they don't need. So I think this is the perfect time for people to get on board the fire movement. I yeah. think this could lead to m many more people becoming retired early um, by, by planning now and actually consciously making it a decision and, and, a, and like a goal in their life to, to get out of that rat race. Yeah. And realizing what's important is what is important for them to spend their money on too. So we were talking a little bit about passion projects, planning ahead, and you know, you kind of had people, you know, your advice for people was to, to kind of think about their passions and, um, you know, figure out what's most important to them yeah. in life for, you mentioned basketball a little bit here that you're coaching on the side, you're, you're digging up some plays and, and trying to plan here moving forward. But is that, would you consider that your passion in life? Like, why is that such so important to you? Um, yeah, hundred percent. I think I have two, two major passions, coaching, and then actually financial independence and real estate. So those are two major passions. So to, you know, to go off that, I, I guess I, I would have maybe an opinion on how people could start to follow their passions more. So I, I think that a lot of people are, the question is, is are you happy doing what you're doing right now currently? So that's what we have the time to figure out. Are you happy in your day to day, every day when you wake up? And if the answer is no, I think that there's a kind of a misconception out there that people are like, oh, go follow your passion. Like no matter what, like, I think that if your passion can support your lifestyle, that's the answer. But I also think there's a way for you to do it in a roundabout way where you go out there, you make money doing something that you like, that is enough to sustain your lifestyle, enough to pay for all your expenses. And then you develop a passion project or the passion um, career on the side. And hopefully you can build up that side career while you're still doing your nine to five or you're doing your day to day working job. You can build that up hopefully to a point where either your passion uh, project brings in enough money to overtake your nine to five and then you can leave that. Or, um, for me, what I'm doing is like, I, I've said this multiple times of how I want to be able to be a high school coach at, at doing that full time. So that goes back to the importance of saving and the importance of investing. The route that I took is to say, okay, I'm going to do a job that 
I really like, I really like my full-time job, but I'm going to save up as much money as I can and invest it in passive income so that it can support my lifestyle so that the, the passion project, the coaching that I really want to do, I don't have to do it for a paycheck every day. So that's, I, I really like that approach because what it does is a lot of people end up losing their passion if it's directly tied to the dollars that they make. Right. So, and I, I'll give you an example. So people are like, Corey, why don't you go coach division one basketball? Why didn't you follow that dream? And um, I think the reason for me is that I know a lot of people who went that route and ended up burning themselves out because they spend so much time and energy trying to make the paycheck doing what they're doing that they ended up losing the fire for why they really started even liking it in the first place. Because guess what? If you're coaching division one basketball and your best player um, breaks his, you know, tears his ACL and your second best player transfers out and you lose 20 games, you could get fired. And it's not even has nothing to do with the amount of work that you put in. So for me, it's like, how can I coach at the high school level, which is the most, it, it has the most joy. It's the most pure form of the sport. And I don't have to, you know, squeeze every dollar out of it. And it's not about the money. So, um, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Like what I'm focused on. I think that there's a lot of ways that people can enter that into their own lives, if that makes sense. Yeah. I think you hit on an important point here. And I, I hope I don't, maybe it's too confusing. This is just kind of a thought I had, but you mentioned that like something like an outside factor would Im affect that job essentially, right? Someone goes down, someone gets hurt but, and yeah. your whole livelihood gets affected by that something uncontrollable. There's a lot of industries that are like that right now, like in certain sales jobs, medical field, like that is what people should be kind of thinking about when they go to take a job where they, they try to find their passion, something going on. Like you are susceptible to outside factors affecting clearly like this coronavirus affecting okay. your livelihood. Um, so that's also a way to, to weigh risk too when, when you're going to apply for a job or, or look for your next thing. Yeah. Um, that's why you need to be di uh, diversified. And yeah. have multiple streams of income. And by the way, if you're really into acting and you want that to be your passion, you're not going to make money up front. I'm not saying not to do that at all. I'm just saying there's another route to build up your income and then get back to your passion at one day. You know what I mean? 100%. There's different avenues to do it though. Say you're passionate. Say you have to work to put food on the table, right? Look at YouTube. If you want to act, start a YouTube channel. You're yeah. literally in front. You can be in front of millions. Yeah. I mean, obviously you're going to have to put some science behind it and, and tax, but well, dude, I mean, that's exactly how my cousin got famous. Like, Oh, they, really? had, a, they had a YouTube channel. They've yeah. got founded on YouTube and now they have shown comedy central. Like that's literally how it happened. So, okay. so yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much proven. So just think about what you're passionate about and start to start to chip away at that at, on the side. That's what I would, that's what I would say. And maybe everyone, maybe a lot of people listening love their job, in which case you're in, you're in a good spot. Then you all have, all you have to do is focus on saving money and investing so that you can um, do your job without as much stress. Like that's, that's another way to look at it too. It's something on the side. Like yeah. we say passion project, but that could be your passion project is to create a new stream of income and you want to dive in another creative way. Look at e-commerce right now. I think it's perfect. There's yeah. so many different online stores in any type of category you want. Um, and I really think people can find success. You find a lot more people buying online right now. Yeah. Also a hundred percent. Right, dude. Also, I think a good way to maybe potentially find what your passion is, is think about what you would do for free. That's how I got started in coaching. I, I approached, uh, you know, our head coach and said, um, I'm going to, I, I do this for free. Like, will you accept that? And then I got in and now I do get paid for it, but it's like, what would you do for free? That'll find, that'll help you find your passion. Right. What do you spend hours reading about and yeah. you just get lost in it? Or what, what do you find yourself just smiling, gazing into the, into space thinking about like, yeah. that's for a lot of people, that's their passion and um, work takes over that. And not to say it hasn't for, for us in certain ways too. Right. But like, yeah. It's, it's interesting to think about. I think about that stuff all every day. Like, how can I get better? What am I going to do with my life? I think everybody's in that. Yeah. But that's what we're saying. That's why we wanted to do this bonus episode. Cause it's like, this is the perfect time to really think about it and then take action once it's over. Where a lot of times you're nine to five. What happens is it's like months go by and you're like, Oh my God, how is it April? How is it May? How is it June? And then uh, this is the time where you can say, all right, let me sit down. Let me think about this. What, what do I want to do? What do I want my next three months, six months, nine months, 12 months to look like? Um, and you can really start to chip away at it once we, you know, get back to a somewhat sense of normalcy. A lot of times you, you do things, right. And you don't 
you don't see them come to fruition right away, but you look back later in life and those were the building blocks that led you down that road. Mm-hmm. Um, I was watching a, watching a, a YouTube video on um, the Stanford, 2005 Stanford commencement speech. Um, and Steve Jobs did it. Oh yeah. He I don't talk- think I've ever seen that. It's, it's actually, pre- it's, it's like maybe 10, 15 minutes. It's not too long, but um, essentially what happened is he dropped out of Reed college and instead of like, you know, being a dropout and going home and doing nothing. He, he stayed around and he called it as a drop in. And basically he would go to classes for free um, and just sit in them. And he sat in a, on a calligraphy you class. Do that? Ah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> not, yeah. not supposed to. Yeah. But, okay. I got um, he, he coined it a drop in unless, yeah. unless that's a real thing. I, I think they may let people sit in on college classes like that. I think you can sit in. I don't know. Okay. Then I may, I may be off. I, I took it as he just went that's dark cool. horse on him and I, you know, so it's pretty cool. But so basically yeah. he's in a calligraphy class, right? Uh, for type different fonts. Yeah. And he's like, how is this ever going to apply to me? I don't know, but I just love the way that they talk about how people write the different fonts, how they attract the eye and, and just the art behind it. Yeah. Um, Years later, he starts, he starts this company, um, Apple, right? And Never for, heard of it. For the Mac, he used that calligraphy typeface as the, as the font. And that's what separated him from other companies. It was just attractive to the eye. Consumers really resonated with it. And the, he looked back and said, wow, if I never took that class, I would never have been, had that differential, differentiator from other companies. And he just, he talked about connecting the dots. Yeah. Talk about connecting the dots, man. That's wild. It's insane. So I thought that was really cool. And, and just people, I think you really need to think about what you're doing on a daily basis and how that can affect you in the long term, whether you know it or not, even the things that you're not doing, right? Like say you're spending all day playing video games as opposed to reading something constructive, super yeah. basic. Like we all get fall, fall in the trap of like leisure and watching stuff, like watching sports, right? Yeah. Not right now, but um, things Wait. that may take away from, you know, later down the line. So I, I thought that was awesome, but. That's really cool. Um, yeah. So I think we just wanted to get on the horn here and, and talk to people, let, like put a positive spin on the quarantine and being stuck inside and just letting people know that there are things we feel like there's things that, well, there's things that we're doing. And um, yeah, I would say. The pe- this is the perfect time to look at the, the, the glass and it's half full as opposed to half empty. A lot of people are getting super down. They're by themselves. Like they're in their house. There's not much going on. You should view this time as a gift. You're never going to get time like this where you can literally explore your interests and potentially use them to get better and get and actually earn income later yeah. down, down in life. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I said for myself, I would have killed for a work from home day. Now I have four of them. Plus we kind of like a half day Friday into the weekend. Like I can do things, make my own schedule and figure out I have literally no excuse now. With that, that wraps up the bonus episode for the weekly juice podcast. Thank you for joining and tuning in. We look forward to seeing you next time. Juice boys out. See ya. See ya. (laughs)